So now it's my great pleasure to bring up a dear friend of mine, an awesome person. You know her as the managing partner of the Seattle Angel Fund. She's also the author of Angel Financing for Entrepreneurs and Angel Investing Groups, Networks, and Funds. I'm really pleased to have Susan here. I was also honored to be with her when she received the uh, 2014 uh, Women of Valor Award, which was bestowed upon her personally by the then Vice President Joe Biden. It was terrific, uh, very well deserved. And she's gonna come up and tell us, uh, uh, give us an analysis of uh, the recent findings of the HALO report. Uh, please welcome to the stage, Susan Preston. Thank you, Susan. So good to see you. Thank you. Thank you. There we go. All right. So I have been asked to come here and give you an update on where we are with the HALO report. Um, as chair of the Angel Resource Institute, which is one of the organizations that spun out of Kauffman Foundation, uh, about 12 years ago, I was at Kauffman when we worked on creating that and the Angel Capital Association. Um, very, very honored to continue to do uh, the great work that the Angel Resource Institute does, um, particularly in our HALO report, which follows what are angels doing in the United States. And um, I want to, I will add some anecdotes along the way while you see the, the screens and the statistics. But one of the things I do want to add to the point that was made right at the very end is that there is some really interesting statistics that was actually done for the purposes of comparing Silicon Valley to the rest of the innovation hubs and the other five, we are one of the other five primary innovation hubs in the United States uh, and doing that. And when you looked at graduates in STEM, uh, the Seattle area was three times better than even Silicon Valley. So I, I know, isn't that awesome? So I think that that tells us and reinforces the point that we've got some great talent, some really smart people, not only to be the leaders of these organizations, but we all know it takes a village or a team to grow a company. And so there's a lot of really great talent that's coming out of our academic institutions. Um, so I'm very pleased about that. All right, so um, all of you, Please um, feel free, the full report is available online um, at angelresource.org. You're welcome to go on there and download it for your own use. We just came out with it and released it at the Angel, the ACA Summit, uh, the end of April uh, doing that. So let me just kind of walk through. Um, I'm not expecting you to read this. Um, I'm only wanting to point out two things here that I think are really important um, about this year's one, is that we had about 2,700, a little over 2,700 deals that we looked at that represented $3.5 billion. This is all angel groups. Um, we did get statistics from angel individuals, but we'll be reporting on that later. But what's also really important is this is a 200% increase over our analysis of 2015. Uh, so we feel very good about these numbers. We did um, a comprehensive scrub on it. it. Took us a lot of time to go through the process and we feel great about the numbers that we're gonna report to you. So here are, um, here's what we look at from the standpoint of what we consider the various regions and areas of the United States. This is one of the first times we broke the report down by region. And I'll give you some of the numbers from our region here. Um, as you can see here, we didn't make the top five. And this is one of the, the challenges for us here is that despite having great talent and so forth, we actually have struggled um, in growing the number of companies. Um, and in fact, if you looked at the numbers from last year, we actually shrunk in the amount of uh, dollars going in by angels as well as Series A um, by nearly 50%. So we have a lot of room to grow. Um, as investors um, to support all of you talented individuals out there and doing that. Not surprising California is in the lead. I hope that doesn't shock anybody. What I do think is quite interesting here is though is the Southeast has been really ramping up, particularly in Florida, um, North Carolina and Georgia are areas that have been growing exponentially and into Virginia. Um, so when we look at diversification um, and how are these various regions doing um, from the standpoint of looking elsewhere, 
uh, for deals. What are these angels doing? And you'll see that we're about we're at 69% um, for how we look inwardly into our region or outwardly in our investments. And I think that's partly driven by that kind of diversification into other regions is partly driven by um, the focus of the angel group. For instance, at Element 8, we do have a tendency, we are focused on clean tech, and sometimes we often, or actually often, have to look outside our region to find those great deals. So I think that's partly a driver in doing that. This is the one that I really like, may not make all of you entrepreneurs out there excited and giddy, um, but there was an adjustment. Now, part of this adjustment, I think, has to do with some differences in the calculations and the analysis of the data between last year for 2015 and how we did 2016. But I feel very good about that number. Now, this is a national average um, of 3.6. So into that is going an understanding of what it looks like in California as opposed to the southeast as opposed to the northwest. So I'll show you the numbers on specifically on the northwest in just a second here. Um, boy, that got messed up, didn't it? Um, so this is on um, the valuations by industry. Uh, so as you can see, there is quite a variability um, in the average valuations we saw because when we did our survey, we asked the question, not only is, you know, what's the, the valuation, but what's the valuation and also give us the industry for that company. So we were able to do some breakdowns um, of looking at this on a national basis. So I think this is pretty interesting as well, um, seeing that um, financial fintech is pretty high, the highest on a national basis, uh, being driven a lot by Silicon Valley and Boston and New York and doing that. And then also the median size for an angel group is 127,000, again on a national basis. My own experience um, with a lot of our local groups is that it's generally a little bit higher than that. Um, but this is what we see. Now, if you combine that with co-investments with venture funds and family groups, it gets up just a smidgen under a million dollars of doing that. What else is really interesting here, I think, is that it is basically evenly split between the first round of funding and follow-on. Uh, so angels are keeping dry powder. They understand and recognize the need uh, to support the company more than just that initial round. I think this is a real positive. I think this is saying that the angels are committed um, to investing for the long term with the company and providing that needed support. Because I know it's going to be a surprise, but sometimes you don't hit those milestones that you meant you knew you were going to hit in that next year. Sometimes it takes a little longer. Um, to do that. The other thing we also looked at, um, we did a minority report to try to see where it is from the standpoint of the companies that were being invested. I'd like to, I, I think it's great um, that we're showing an up, an increase in um, females uh, doing this, so, um, but obviously still, um, as previously reported, it is still dominated by men. Um, and particularly white males. Um, but I think that the transition is going well. I could have brought to you today, but we would have spent a little bit more time, the statistics that I have on the performance of women-led companies opposed to male-led com companies, and it's dramatic. Um, not only in the startup of female to male, but also in publicly, S you know, S&P 500 companies. The revenues are dramatically different and much more favorable for women and doing that. So here's the Northwest. So as you can see, our pre-money, the average pre-money here for an angel round, this is typically a seed or a very early Series A, but mostly seed, is around 3.1 million. And our average round size is nearly a million dollars. Um, I like that because I think that that tells us that we're doing some great deals. We're combining between not just angels, a single group, but we're doing a combination of various angel groups. We're also getting some family offices involved and large individual investors. And then the investment per group is right on target with the norm. But um, our, and this is the split between the uh, deal structure size and doing this. Um, I would love to see a little bit more um, uptick on the preferred stock round, um, but that's my personal um, preference. But as you can see, safes, um, KISS, and some other structures um, are um, 
pretty, that's almost 20%. That's actually a fairly definitive material amount in looking at some of these alternative structures for investment. And then I'm very proud of the fact that um, of all the regions, um, we are the highest. There's one other that's at 21% for female um, founders. And so I'm really tickled to see that, um, that we are doing a great job here. And then also, I don't think it should surprise anybody, the majority of the investments in our region are in software. Um, 30, almost 37% of the investments in this region are software of doing that. Um, so that, I think that reflects um, our industry in general. But um, as you can see, healthcare has got a, a decent part. Um, we're going to be breaking down that other more um, in the years to come and looking at that in other ways of analyzing that. So I'm hoping that we'll get more granular um, and with each of our reports. We're going to try to go back to, we're going to do a half yearly and then um, hopefully into 2018 and 19, we're going to go back to the quarterly. Um, we have an exciting new relationship at ARI with Florida Atlantic University, which is giving us um, four different PhDs um, to do the research um, and administrative folks. So we're really excited about being able to expand um, statistically on that. One of the things that I try to emphasize when I'm either speaking to entrepreneurs or to investors is that um, the idea of going for a unicorn in investment um, process is not necessarily the proper um, avenue to, um, to approach. Statistically, we know um, one in 100 million companies become unicorns. What we also know um, is that according to CB Insights and the analysis that they did, 43% of companies exit for 50 million and less. That really correlates well with some studies that we did um, at ARI a number of years ago. And we asked the question, we looked at a group of companies that um, several, a couple thousand companies um, and M&A exits, which we know is the primary exit structure for most companies. We looked at companies that had received between one and $10 million and companies that received between 10 and 100. The 10 million divide being that can make some level of an assumption that the companies from 10 million and less were most likely angel supported and invested 10 million to 100 million more likely VC. Um, and what we found out very interestingly is that the companies in the one to $10 million raise had seven times better exits than the companies from 10 to 100 million. And at first you think, that doesn't make any sense, but it actually makes perfect sense. So if I have a company that raises five million and they exit for 50 million, that's a nice return. That's a 10X just straight on cash, right? Um, but if I have a company that's raised 50 million, how much do they need to exit for in order to get that same 10X? Half a billion. Half a billion. How easy is it to sell a company for 50 million as opposed to half a billion? The Googles, the Amazons, the Microsofts, everybody out there is going to spend all day buying companies for 50 million, but they're going to have to think about buying a company for a half a billion. So there's just so much logic when you stop to think about this process and what we do um, as investors and entrepreneurs to think about the logic of this, of this um, sector of investing. The other statistic, just very quickly, and then I'm going to end, um, is that getting a VC investing does add three to five years to the exit because of that requirement. But the, the other thing that I think is really important, this is particularly for the investors, and I drive this home whenever I'm teaching, is that um, when we look at the CB Insights study on why companies fail, and then we also look at the corresponding um, study that Bill Gross did on his 100 plus investments, can anybody tell me the number one reason why companies either failed or were successful? It's basically the same thing. Yes? Timing? Timing? Yeah. Timing of what? Timing of market. Yes. That's exactly right. It was the market. Um, and it was timing a market and having a viable market out there that was ready for the product. Now, everything is important, team, technology, and everything. But what I want to drive home with that point is you cannot forget the market. This is a very complex process. That's why most companies fail, because it's not a single. That's just too easy. So remember to look at all those factors um, when you're trying to 
um, grow your company investors when you're looking at um, companies. And so some final things for you to look at. We also did, um, we finally had the money. We got a great grant from NASDAQ and Kauffman to do another return study. Uh, the final report will be out this summer. 2007 in blue was our last study in the US. Um, the yellow is from the UK and then the red is most recent um, study. But statistically, I want to bring this, um, emphasize this point. We were actually quite consistent between 2007 and 2016. It showed about a 2.5 to 2.x return um, for angels um, with an average hold time of 4.5 years. That's really good performing asset class. That's an excellent performing asset class. Um, it does also show that 10% um, of our exits um, or 85% of the dollars we get come from 10% of our investments. Again, statistically, making a diversified portfolio is the best route for angel investors. And it also bodes well against venture. Um, we all know that venture has not done very well through the 2000s. And in fact, just now coming into the teens of the 2000s is when venture is starting to hit numbers that reflect the angel return. Uh, so I think that's really interesting. When angel investing is done right, done uh, thorough due diligence, follow on participation and support of the company, I think you have the opportunity for some great investments of uh, doing that. So just finally, um, just to mention, we are raising our third fund. Um, we're active in that. Um, and this is a little bit different model than a lot of angel groups because it is an actual fund. Um, we have member participation, but it's managed um, by experience management with about 20 years plus experience. It is a member engaged process. The members make the final decision on the investment, but we use a very disciplined venture capital-esque type of process 15 to 20 page investment memos, um, and really um, we've gotten a great reputation for the thoroughness. And I believe that the funding, the money sitting in a fund does attract great deals. So I'm looking forward to talking to some of the companies here. I want to thank you very much. I hope this was informative for you and uh, look forward to the rest of the afternoon. Thank you. So we know that angel investing when done right does a good thing. So we have some great sponsors that are providing some support for the entrepreneurs. Thank you. You're welcome.